Hello and welcome to Tech for Non-Techies, the only podcast that demystifies the fast-growing technology sector. I'm your host, Sophia Madriega, Chicago Beef MBA and tech entrepreneur. My aim here is to give you the skills, knowledge and confidence to find opportunities in the tech sector, whether that's through founding a company, getting a dream job or bringing a fresh perspective to your work. Hello, hello. For this episode, I spoke to Amber Kearney about how she transitioned from a non-technical role in management consulting to product management at Capital One. This episode is an excerpt of a live session that Amber did for Tech for Non-Techies members. So you'll hear her giving advice on how non-technical professionals can transition into technical roles. She offers some ideas for courses you should be taking and for the kind of networking and knowledge you should be gathering, if that's the kind of path you want to take. So without further ado, here is Amber. I'm Amber. Um, Thank you so much for having me for the Tech for Non-Techies Network. Um, I'm super excited to talk about my background because I also am not a a techie by trade, um, but I do consider myself a technologist now, having been in the industry for a little while. Um, So a little bit about me. I'm a digital product manager at Capital One. Um, I'm a former technology consultant with a company you may be familiar with, Deloitte. Um, And then on a more personal front, I am an advocate for women and minorities in technology. So one thing that really piqued my interest joining this industry was that there weren't a lot of people who look like me. And so I'm a huge um, advocate for both seeing women in leadership roles and, you know, charting new paths and being trailblazers as well as minorities um, in technology and learning, you know, deep tech and really being involved in those conversations. And then also in my personal life, I love the KonMari method. So (laughs) if you're not familiar with uh, Marie Kondo, definitely check her out. She's amazing. And I love home decor. So love um, anything that allows me to get uh, more design and creative spaces. Interesting. I wonder how that then leads in with product management because design is such an important part of it. Um, Well, so this is. This is kind of a summary of what you've been up to. You've been busy, Amber. (laughs) Yeah, so I'll kind of start from the beginning and then take you through where I am now. And obviously, there's some good, I think we can pull on some of the questions you guys have. I'm going to pull the chat up too, just to make sure I'm covering. So um, let's start at the beginning. 2013, I was a new grad from uh, business school. And I said, okay, what do I want to do with my career? Um, All the way through school, I had really loved um, the more marketing and creative side. So again, that leaning toward that design aspect. Um, I focused a lot on, um, you know, marketing, advertising. I had my internship in an ad agency, which I loved. And I really thought that was going to be my career path. And then eventually I found technology. And at, I'll say technology found me, rather. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was an opportunity at Deloitte. Um, they had a great brand. I truly chose Deloitte based on the people that were there um, and the fact that they had great clients and the clients were recognizable. And so um, starting there, I thought that I would be one of those people who, you know, I'd be a business student who or business um, practitioner who would be helping, you know, drive some of the optimizations and efficiencies. Um, but I really learned that I had to be a technologist early on. It was not acceptable to not be able to speak the lingo and, and know exactly what technology trends were out there. So that was kind of my first two years in consulting was like really getting my, my feet wet and getting the foundation of what is technology? What is the SDLC or the software development life cycle? What are different testing um, methodologies? I'm, someone said in the chat, Laura said that she's a test, a QA um, engineer. And I was actually a, a tester, a manual tester, my first project doing writing uh, test scripts and actually executing and doing like, you know, finding bugs and logging the defects, all that stuff manually for a government um, agency. And so um, my, my intro to tech was really like hands on. It was not one of those, like, you know, I had an engineering background. It was like, just jump, jump in there and, and try to learn it the best you can. Um, and then 2015 is when I started to kind of explore a little bit more getting back into that creative side. So I was missing that. I mean, quite frankly, I loved um, having that user interaction and thinking, you know, why do pe- certain people choose certain advertisements or why do certain colors evoke certain emotions? Like, I really love that. So I was wondering how to blend both the business side that I knew um, because of my MBA with the tech that I was learning and then the design that I just naturally had an inclination for. And so there was a program within Deloitte called the uh, Deloitte Tele- uh, Technology Fellowship Program, um, which they were doing interviews and applications for. So it was a really kind of rigorous process, although my cohort was like the second one. So they were kind of figuring it out still. Um, and it's still, go- it's still going on today from, from what I know. Um, 
And so this, that fellowship program I got accepted into, and that really was my intro to PM. And, and at the time, they weren't even calling it product management. They were calling it business experience design. So it was a name that people weren't familiar with. Um, but the role itself, to me, looked really uh, interesting and really cool. And so, like, you know, it blends everything that I want to do. Um, and I just want to quit, make a quick note here, too, that I actually got told no. Like, I told that before doing this program, and I tried to automatically make the jump into the um, business experience design or product management role, they said, oh, sorry, you don't have enough in, uh, enough knowledge or skill set for this for this type of role. So, you know, we'll, we'll check back with you in a few in a few years, basically. And so me getting into that program was really like my way of saying, like, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to go ahead and continue to start um, charting my path. So. And so just a question here. Um, so when they said no to you, did you then take some courses or like was or was there no opportunity? Did you literally just have to carry on applying? Like. What was that yeah. process like? Because, you know, I'm, I'm always interested in the kind of how you bounce back from rejection journey, mm -hmm. what you practically do, because I think it's such an important part of any kind of success, whether it's professional or, frankly, personal. Absolutely. No, so, yeah, I will say there was a bit of a gap in between when I actually found out about the tech fellowship program and when I was told no. So during that gap is when I started like networking, super like just networking with anybody. So from that meeting that I was told no, I said, okay, well, can you give me some names of folks that I can talk to that may be helpful in, you know, teaching or like not necessarily teaching, but more so opening, uh, providing you resources, opening doors and kind of just thinking through like what are, what was their path? Um, Cause I like to see how that, how that is, you know, how other people have gotten to where I want to be. And maybe that's an inspiration for me to try different things. So I remember meeting with, um, so you're basically looking yeah. for people like, you so so you're kind of giving back now yeah exactly <laughs> okay exactly. interesting because um for those of you who were on Juliet Eisner's sessions um it was a kind of similar message of a session she's a product manager at the telegraph which is one of the largest newspapers in the uk and she also transitioned from journalism to product management and what she what she said was so similar to to what you're saying because it's it's a non-linear path and she yeah. said it was basically networking. She spoke with lots of people. She took product managers in the company out for coffee, got to know what they did, and you know, then got in there. So this seems Absolutely. to be a pattern. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think that's, and I know we have maybe a few uh, MBA students. Like, if they haven't stressed this in your in your program, like networking is is so key to your relationships in general are just so key to your career growth. And so that was my first step after I told no, it was like, all right, let me start talking to people and just like, you know, getting, getting some brainstorming. Um, and that's actually how I found out about the tech fellowship program. Cool. Yeah. So then um, kind of moving into the latter part, of, you know, of that, um, that, upper, that, that tech fellowship program, um, I was learning um, product management. So we can choose different cohorts to be in. Um, I chose the, the BXD or product. We, we changed the name to product eventually um, uh, co or portion of that cohort. And we also had engineers, we had designers. Um, there were other folks who were also involved. And so um, I chose PM and it gave us the opportunity to first learn academia, like in an academic setting. Um, what is product management? Like have homework, like kind of really being in school again. That was the program that really taught me um, that academic portion of it. And then the second half of the program was actually um, applying your learning. So you would, you know, we're, we're, we're able to do discovery, find a problem, create a product, bring it all the way from inception all the way to um, release, which is, a, it was released internally in the sandbox environment. So, um, you know, it was a great opportunity for me to learn and, and grow and get feedback from more senior PMs who are doing the roles um, that we would eventually do. So then um, while I was in that program, I actually transitioned into Deloitte Digital. Um, and then I, I grew from 2015 to 2019 from a junior product manager to a senior product manager. And there was, you know, a couple of hops in between, but um, during that time is when I really got that ground that, you know, that groundwork and that, um, the experience, um, I got my certification in uh, scrum and we'll talk about that a little bit. I know as well. And then I got, um, a user experience design, um, certification from the general assembly, just for the mere fact that I think design was one of those areas that I really, like I said before, I really leaned heavy on that. And so I wanted to really have the, have the context of that from a technology standpoint, how do we design products? Um, and so that was my kind of experience at, at Deloitte Digital, uh, which then kind of led me to where I'm at now, Capital One. So 
looking to do more um, industry facing products. Um, obviously, working in a consulting firm definitely have its limitations with product and that you're, you know, you kind of create products, you may do something for a short term, and then the owner of that is actually your client. So having um, an, an, an industry and being on industry side where you can actually be the owner and the, the manager and kind of see something through several iterations and different um, you know, different types of, you know, releases and different, uh, different features coming on. It really was attractive for me at Capital One. My experience at Capital One from the last year, I did get AWS certified. And I want to mention this because I think this is typically a certification that technologists or people that are doing development actually get. Um, but I think one other way that helps me as a non-techie by trade um, be more technical is to really just like find out ways to learn what they're learning, you know, like AWS certifications and any cloud certifications are on the horizon right now for a lot of technologists. So um, definitely would recommend if that's something that you can do in your spare time, like try to learn about what the tools that the development teams are using, um, because that'll help you also translate a little bit. But yeah, for the sake of today's conversation, we'll focus a little bit on some of my learnings from the technology fellowship program and how they've played out in my career thus far. And um, So just for this AWS program because I know that uh, the people who come to our events generally are very studious so when they see that somebody's taking a course they're like where's the course can I take it can I get a pay you know uh, I know you type a people so is this is this something that's exclusive to Deloitte or can anybody just roll up uh, on the website and just do, yeah, do. absolutely. So this is this is a um, Amazon Web Services is um, hosted by Amazon. It's you know one of the, I think I think the largest cloud platform and cloud base um, yeah. in the world. And so um, I would recommend. So the class that I use is actually um, not affiliated with any company. It's called um, A Cloud Guru, um, and that's the the training uh, program that I use. And it's like a you know I think a two or three day session that. Or a couple hours worth of sessions, it depends on when you take the session, when you take the classes. But I took them in within probably like two or three days and just like took a couple of days off, like really went heads down on, on, on the courses and the, the homework and the quizzes that are involved in that. Um, and then I took the, the test thereafter. So it's really a, it's really an opportunity to kind of apply, like you said, those type A skills and just kind of like study, knock it out and, and have a great certification that gives you the foundational knowledge. Okay, cool. So then if you're a non-technical person and then you're trying to get into that field and then they say, well, you know, we're not sure about your experience, you can say, well, I've done this course and yes, I haven't yet got any practical experience, but A, I've got some academic knowledge, but also B, I'm the kind of person who finds out that there is a course on cloud computing and then I take it. Because I think, you know, those two things are really good and, you know, it's three days. So yeah, what absolutely. If if there are a few rainy days wherever you are, you know, you could spend it doing that. Or Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's wiser, right? Exactly. So, so yeah, I'll just talk like three things that I'll talk about specifically. And there'll, there'll be other things that come out of this. But like some of the, the key takeaways that I've learned from that program that I was in was one, like there, the misconception that the product manager is the boss or the person who's in charge of every single thing and every single person. Um, I'll, I'll kind of demystify that a little bit and then unpack that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about client service and what I learned from my consulting experience and how that translates into my product experience. Um, not to sell anyone on being a consultant, but I will say it's, it's important to have a client mindset. And I think also being an MBA and, and kind of um, learning throughout your education also helps with that as well. And then um, I'll talk some about agile and design thinking and how those two intersect and why it's so important to um, advocate for both of those. Thank you. Yeah, I know we've got a few MBA uh, graduates and MBA students here, so they're going to find this useful. Right. Yeah. So let's start with number one. So the product manager manages the product and not the people. Um, I have to call this out because I think you know, we'll see sometimes product managers are heads of product or like VP roles. They do have people management roles, but largely in your product manager, especially in their junior years and as you move into the even managerial years, you're not managing a team of people. You're managing a product. And so I think it's really important to remember that as well, because um, when, sometimes when a product manager role, you're having to interface with a lot of opinions and a lot of, you know, different uh, leadership. And ultimately, the decision does lie on you. But it's your responsibility to collaborate and not necessarily dictate. Um, I, I just want to make sure I call that out. I think a lot of um, men and women and, and of different backgrounds and different um, experiences may think, like, I have the best opinion. I have the best know-how. 
this is what it is. And so I think it's really important to be collaborative when you're um, making decisions for the product. Um, I also want to call out that the PM is not the team admin or the scribe <laughs> because um, I, when I first started as a junior product manager, and yeah, I'm the, probably the most junior on the team, manage, or like managing a product where there are a lot more senior people um, involved. Um, sometimes, it, you know, things get thrown over the fence like, oh, Amber, can you schedule this meeting or can you take these notes or can you do these? And it's like, no, like we can, we have a whole team of people who can actually contribute to that as well. So I think just being firm on, um, not saying that you have to say, like, I'm never taking notes for a meeting, but just remember your role is not, your expectation is not to necessarily do the administrative work for the entire team all the time. You can definitely share um, all of those, those responsibilities with everyone and everyone should like want to contribute to those as well. Um, and then we'll go to Agile in a little bit, but I think um, the product manager can also be the product owner. Um, and those two terms are different, um, but from a product ownership um, standpoint in Agile, um, it, it is pretty common that you'll see the product owner and the product manager be the same person, uh, which means you're also managing the backlog, you're also writing user stories, you're also um, coming up with um, the, the features and the epics that will then kind of drive the roadmap. So those are more product ownership roles that I would think um, are really important in your role as well as a PM. So who's more junior? Is there a seniority aspect to the product manager versus product owner? Um, so no, not necessarily. I don't think in, in Agile that they, they consider like levels. Um, it's more so just like, what are the roles? What are the team members roles? And they're um, cross-functional teams. So, you know, the product owner works with the dis development team and the, um, the scrum master and those, those different roles within the Agile framework. Um, they're not really level specific. It's more so just what, what you're doing, the, um, the work you're doing. So as a non-technical person, is it easier or better to go for the PM or the product owner? What, what are your thoughts? I would, so I personally would go through the product manager um, just because PM is something that's pretty um, transferable in a lot of different companies. Product owners are, are not always, uh, you won't always see a job description for product owner. Like you may see it um, as more of an agile scrum master role that people are hiring for, something that's, you know, a little, little more uh, deep in the weeds, whereas like a product owner is kind of, a lot of times it is kind of expected of you as a PM to be able to do both. And to know Agile. So um, I mentioned like during my time at Deloitte, I um, actually got my Agile certification for being a Scrum Master because in that role at that time, that the, everyone was expected to do both. So I was expected to be the Scrum Master and the product manager. Um, at Capital One, it's different because I'm expected to be the product manager and the product owner. So I would say like that PM role is kind of the foundation. And then what you do outside of that is also just depends on the company and where you are. I mean, that sounds like a lot of what we've covered in various sessions on um, various different sessions because we've had some people from big tech, we've had people from traditional companies that have gone digital. And whenever I ask that question, some people say that we don't have a product owner, we only have product managers. Other yeah. people have this whole, you know, list of kind of job titles as long as your arm. But yeah. you're right, the, pro the product manager, that's the pillar. And mm -hmm. then and then there are lots of some companies whatever. have lots of additions, but for example, at Facebook, they just have product managers and mm -hmm. they don't even have senior or junior. So, you know, if you've been working for 10 years, you'll be mm -hmm. a product manager. And if it's your first job and you manage to get it on Facebook, you're also yeah. a product manager. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, exactly. Each company is different, but the PM role, that's, that's the whole. Yeah, cool. it's definitely the foundation. Yep. Um, so I'm just going to share my point of view of product. I know some, this may be a new concept for people, but from my perspective, product is the product manager is responsible for working with the cross-functional team members, advocating for the users, and understanding the nuances that are necessary for prioritization. Um, so I think the first two are pretty. Those first two within that that statement are pretty standard. You know, cross-functional team members that that's everyone who does the job of bring, bringing the product to life. Um, advocating for the user. Obviously, you'll hear a lot of PMs say like. My, the users is my, is my number one priority. I definitely think that's the case. Um, but the last part, I just want to expound that on just a little bit. And because there's a lot of, um, I don't even know the term, like there's a lot of other stuff <laughs> that product managers have to account for when they're building a product. So yes, the user feedback is very, very important. But you also may have um, the marketing team who may have uh, um, some, some stakeholder feedback, or you might have a legal, or you might have 
um, compliance. Like there's a lot of different other, there's a lot of different nuances and things you have to consider um, that will help you one, dictate what is being built and then what's the priority of things being built or being, um, you know, being brought to life or, or discovery being taken on for those things. So really important for you to kind of have a, a very clear mindset when you're thinking about what's the, the lay of the land for my product so that you can really consider everything, like, you know, all things considered when you're bringing, uh, bringing in prioritization. This is also actually very true um, for founders, um, you know, whether you're not a technical founder or, or a technical founder and you, you're then by kind of uh, default, you become the product manager, um, you know, which, which unexpectedly happened to me. And uh, you then end up often, sorry to say, but getting into this ugly contest where there, is, there are all these choices that you want to make or that you have to make. And what you really want to do is do this thing for the user because you know that this is what the users want. But then you also know that that particular feature is going to take maybe two months to develop. But you know that in a month's time, you will be presenting to an investor and your investor is going to want to see specific in-app retention metrics. And you know that whatever the kind of the feature that's really that's actually going to propel your product forward it's not going to bring you the retention metric that you need within a month and then there's nobody else on the team that can then tell you well i would do this because nobody else really has to deal with the investors and so they're all like well just can't you just explain it to them and you're like well i mean let me try. Um, and, and also another thing that you have to balance, and, and I'm sure it's the same whether it's a small company or a big company, is you have to balance costs. Because especially with things like video, users want videos in general, even if the videos, I think, are not necessarily going to be that relevant. But, you know, they, I, I've often heard of uh, users of lots of different products talking about, okay, this, if we had a video maybe explaining how to use it, it will be, Better videos of X, Y, Z, but videos have a really uh, videos are really expensive. So if you're going to record a video and you're going to store it, that means you got you have storage costs mm -hmm. and you've got download costs and you've got server costs. So I think the prioritization it's it's really important, but also I think it's quite lonely. It's probably one of the loneliest aspects of the job because sometimes everybody hates you. Because you're making a decision that maybe one person will like or maybe nobody will like, but heavy as the head, I guess. No, you're absolutely right, Sophia. I think that's this. All those examples are very true for a product manager. I think that that resonates for a founder as well. Like um, the, the point you made about uh, loneliness, it's, it's sometimes you have to explain to one uh, part of the business why this other part of the business area is more is heavier focus. You know, I think. Um, all of it should true back to the user, I think, but obviously costs and things like that are always, um, are going to be impacted as well. But, um, yeah, that's totally, I totally agree with that. If you want to hear the rest of the session, it's available on demand for Tech Fun and Techies members. If you want to check out our membership, then go to techfunontechies.co forward slash membership. And the link is also in the show notes. In the rest of the session, Amber covers Scrum and Agile, which are product management methodologies. As a Tech for Non-Techies member, you will also get on-demand access to all of our previous sessions, which have covered product management, user experience, design, working in big tech, and Tech for Non-Technical Founders. And you will also get access to all of our live events, so you'll be able to ask your questions directly. And of course, you'll get monthly office hours with me. So what's not to like? Come join us. See you soon.